Oh, it's gonna be a day. It's gonna be a day. The Discovery Series from Bardstown Bourbon Company showcases the art of blending hand-selected, well-aged bourbon for each and every release. Team members throughout the distillery taste, analyze, and vote on the best recipe to create something unique and delicious. This is Discovery Series number nine from Bardstown Bourbon Company, the third Discovery release this year. Each release these days has a new twist to it. For this one, Rare Barrels of Craft Georgia Bourbon is added to the blend. Is it the best discovery of 2022? Let's try it and compare it to seven and eight of this year. Right here, it's the mash and drum. What's up folks, I am Jason C from The Master and Drum and welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe, and do all the things you need to do to help grow the channel, really appreciate you guys. Now the Discovery Series I think is one of the most impressive releases each and every year from Barstown Bourbon Company and just all in bourbon in general. I love the variety they use, there's a lot of innovation that's used. Each one is different and now we have seen different types of whiskeys added. Uh, the eight had some stay finishes to it and now the nine has some Georgia bourbon in the blend. So let's go through what's in the Discovery 9 series. This is the American whiskey blend. It's not considered a bourbon. There's a lot of stuff going on this one. All right, let's break it down. All right, guys, so four components make up Discovery 9. First, we have 35% of that eight year Georgia craft bourbon. It's actually a four grain. It's got 80% corn, 10% wheat, 5% rye, and 5% malted barley. Then you have 31% of that Kentucky 12 year, 75 corn, 13 rye, 12 barley. Uh, then you have more of that Tennessee 17 year in here, only 19% of the blend though. Uh, 84 corn, eight rye, and eight malted barley. And then you have that corn whiskey that we saw a couple of uh, releases back. 15% uh, in that one, 12 year, uh, 12 year corn whiskey out of Canada, 100% corn. So, real unique blend. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit and open up. And while it's opening up, let's hear from today's sponsor for today's video. It is Z-Biotics. Makes a great gift for whiskey lovers. It's the holiday season, guys. Check it out. Today's sponsor is back. It is Z-Biotics. Just in time for the holiday season. With all the great feedback, I wanna make sure all of you get a chance to get these for a great deal before the holidays. Z-Biotics is a product I've been using behind the scenes for my live streams, barrel picks, and other times that I know I'll be having a good amount of whiskey. But also, it's just for folks who want to go out, enjoy some drinks, and still be pretty productive the next day. Z-Biotics is a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol, which is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. Now, when you drink, a toxic byproduct of alcohol builds up in your belly. It's that byproduct, not dehydration, that causes you to be not at your best the day after drinking. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme like the one your liver uses to break down this byproduct. All you do is drink one of these about an hour before you start drinking and that's it. You should still drink water, stay hydrated and get a good night's sleep, but Z-Biotics makes it that much easier to be productive the very next day. Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It's real science that works. I love it because there's no random plant extracts, there's no off the shelf ingredients. And the number one reason why I love it, 100% money back guaranteed. Get Z-Biotics for 15% off by clicking the link below in the description. This is the six pack. They also have a three pack and a 12 pack. The holidays are upon us, everybody. And Z-Biotics not only is great for the holiday parties you all go to, but it makes a great gift. It's unique, it's thoughtful, it's under 40 bucks. So click the link in the description box and use code Mash and Drum at checkout or go to zbiotics.com slash Mash and Drum and get 15% off your first order. Thanks to Zbiotics for sponsoring the video and to all of you for making the sponsors happen. All right guys, so we just found out what's in the blend. Now this is bottled at 112.5 proof. It's priced at 140 bucks where Barstown Bourbon Company is sold. So let's dive in, here we go. The nose has really opened up, which is what I was hoping it would do. Um, man, this, this totally went in a, in like a, how do I explain this? It's, it's like, it, it's like a caramel, a caramel lace cigar. There's like some tobacco there, but I'm getting a lot of caramel on the nose here. Also a ton of orange peel has come to the forefront as well. Yeah, it's interesting. It's got, it's got a good amount of oak going on here too which you wouldn't think, but I think the, uh, I think that George Dickel whiskey that's in the blend is coming through with that really heavy orange peel and that cinnamon, which is pretty, pretty distinctive note. You know, I will say, I think uh, a lot of folks will say, ah, I don't wanna, 
I don't want to taste anything with uh, with George Dickel in the mix, but I think you get the best parts of the George Dickel Tennessee whiskey in here, being a 17 year old. When you when you look at it in terms of getting the orange peel and getting the the cinnamon, the heavy cinnamon from George Dickel, I think that's what you get in here. I think you get a little bit of the oak, but man, the caramel tobacco chocolate combination. That's the bee's knees right there. All right, let's give it a go, guys. Cheers. Mm, that is a beautiful, oh, oh, that just changed a little, little bit. That's a beautiful blend. So this one, this blend is working for me so far, at least on the first sip. Very, very sweet up front, very vanilla. A again, more of that chocolate. There's a lot of chocolate on the palate here, chocolate and caramel. But I, just right on the back end, I got like this hint of like peanut butter, which I was not expecting at all. Let me see if I get it on another sip here. God, it's so faint. It's so faint to me, but I'm getting this little, like just this little hint of peanut butter in the blend. But man, all that caramel chocolate cinnamon, it's just a bomb that just hits your palate. It's mouth coating, it's velvety, good spice on it. I feel like I'm leaning towards this one over the other two from this year. I really liked seven a lot though. Eight was a little bit disjointed for me because there was so much going on. Uh, but well, we'll, we'll do a comparison a little bit. But man, when it comes to the palate on this one, the, the front of the palate is just all cinnamon, spice, and sweet and cocoa powder and chocolate all day long. And then there's this weird like peanut butter thing that just kind of comes out of nowhere for me. A little bit of oak char and smoke actually start coming to the forefront as well. It's got a nice mouthfeel to it. It kind of works your whole palate with spice. It's got that effervescent thing. I call it the pop rocks effect where it just kind of tingles throughout the entire palate a little bit, which is I think what, which is what you want and makes it more interesting. It's not just flat and flies through your palate like that. The only knock I'll give it is that it is a bit drying. And I'm not sure if that's from the uh, some of the higher age whiskeys in here. The the fact that it's pretty oak forward. Again, that cocoa powder, which can be a little bit drying sometimes. It's not a milk chocolate. It's more of like a bitter chocolate. That could get into that drying effect a little bit too. It's nice. This is a uh, this is a this is a blend that I could see just kind of getting better and better. But man, the finish on this is incredible. And as I'm bringing my the glass to my nose a little bit more. I'm getting more of those craft whiskey nuances. I'm getting a little bit more of, of some grain here, and I'm also getting a little bit more of smoke. There's a little bit more of a that smoky tobacco note. I'm getting more and more on the nose. But man, it is all intertwined with that intense caramel chocolate. And again, that orange peel, that orange cinnamon heft, I think is still there. But without all the, you know, the dickel minerality. All right, so what I want to do is compare it to the other two from this year, uh, seven and eight, because I think when you start comparing, even more flavors start to open up, so I'm going to give these a pour. All right, guys, here we are. Got them all poured, seven, eight, and nine. Let's do a quick comparison and see which one I actually like best. Uh, I'll just flash the components of each blend here on the screen uh, instead of talking through all of them because it'll take forever. So let's go to seven, which I haven't had in a minute. And man, coming off the nose of nine, Discovery seven definitely is more ride driven. It's not nearly as sweet as nine. Man, nine is just candy in a glass when you, this is what I mean, when you do these comparisons, different notes start to come to the forefront, open up. That's why comparison's the best. Yeah, definitely more rye spice here, a little bit more minty. I feel like you get the corn whiskey in it too because it is still pretty sweet. But let's try number seven here. Ugh. I love number seven. You know why? Because I'm a burai guy. I love burais. I love the blend of sweet and spice and everything nice and everything that comes along with it. The mint, the cinnamon, the sweet, the caramel, the vanillas, the little bit of a dark fruit characteristic. This is why I love seven so much. It's got, it's just so balanced. 
So I feel like seven has a balance like nine, but it's just more ride driven, which, uh, which I really like. But the, I think the corn whiskey in there really bridges the gap nicely between the bourbon and the rye. You kind of get this nice like swell of sweets. And then you have the, you know, the sweet, the sweetness of the bourbon on one end, and then you have all the rye spice on the other end. So yeah, that's, that's really nice. So still a fan of number seven. Let's go to eight. Now, eight was the outlier for me. I wasn't too crazy about eight when I tried it. I felt like there were so many things going on. I just couldn't, I couldn't grapple onto one thing that made it stand out. So I haven't had it in a while and hopefully it opened up. Let's see what we got here. Wow, this has become such a fruit forward uh, whiskey. Um, yeah, blended whiskey, blended whiskey. So, all three of these are not technically bourbons, they're all blended whiskeys, which is kind of cool. So what I'm getting on number eight, which still I remember is how oak driven it is. And that makes sense from all the state finishes that they utilized in it. You get everything from cherries to pastry to a lot of oak. I'm getting apple. I'm also getting a little bit of a, like a sweet tobacco note in this one as well. So the nose has really opened up quite a bit. So let's try it, here we go. I think the stave finishes have opened up a little bit. It's a little bit, it feels a little bit more integrated. There's still a lot going on. I still feel like you get a lot of rye spice on this. What's this one is still a little bit more rye driven to me, um, just like seven is. But I think all the oak staves and the, and the different finishes that they use, again, still for me are a little bit fighting each other. You yeah, get a little bit more of that smokiness to it, I think, from all the uh, the state finishes. All right, I still think I like seven over eight. All right, let's go to nine. Oh, nine. Nine just brings you to a little bit of a darker place. And it's not as spicy as seven. Go to seven here. It's a tough decision. I think, uh, I think eight I like. It's not a bad whiskey but there's just too much going on for me to kind of latch on to something that really speaks to me. Seven, I love the burai aspect of it, but nine, nine has like these darker flavors. I don't know if it's that craft whiskey that's in there, but there's just like these, this darker profile, the sweet tobacco, the chocolate, the caramel, the really like the late finish on it. That is what I love in a good, in a good blend. And I think nine nails it. So if I had to rank these uh, for this year, I would go uh, eight, probably last place, seven, probably a close first, but still second, and then number nine. If you haven't bought any Discovery this year yet, um, I would still, I would highly suggest picking up the nine if you could come across it. Just an absolutely delicious blend, and um, I love the use of craft whiskey in it. It's dark, it's light. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's got orange, it's got chocolate, it's got, it's really good. All right guys, well hope you enjoyed this review for the new Discovery number nine. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if you have gotten your hands on number nine yet. If you've had all three and you've compared them, let me know what your results were. I'm gonna have to do these in a blind, I think, on a live stream sometime soon. Um, before I go, of course, I'm gonna blend all of them. I'm gonna make my own Discovery 2022, uh, Usually when I combine like a bunch of different things, I call it the Voltron blend. So this is the Discovery Voltron of 2022. Let's see how it comes out. I, I, I have no, no doubt that this is not gonna work <laughs> whatsoever. But I gotta say on the nose, it smells pretty delicious. All right, let's try it. It's not bad. It actually turned out better than I thought it would, but I feel like it, it could be a little bit better. You know what, if I played with the proportions of these three, it could be a killer blend. Cause even for what I just did off the cuff, that's actually not that bad. All right, the uh, Discovery Series Voltron blend. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. Cheers guys, see you next time right here on the Mass and Drum. Take care everybody.